but I'm still looking for a little bit more. I'd still like to see a little bit more like this and then, then expect maybe a move up off of that. Hello everyone. Today, our guest pro trader, Gareth Soloway, talks about the key levels on the charts for the traditional stock market, big tech stocks, crypto, Bitcoin, and much more on the macro outlook. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. As it hit $35,200 this week, Bitcoin eclipsed various key trend lines, which had previously acted as support for months. These included various moving averages, MA. Among them, the 200-week simple MA at $28,400, the classic bear market support line. A cluster of long-term simple moving averages of price are located around $28,000 and have provided market resistance through September and October, Glassnode noted. After a month of the market grinding higher, the bulls found sufficient strength this week to convincingly break through the 111-day 200-day, and 200-week averages. So we got some key economic data out, as we can see here, core PCE. Now remember, the PCE numbers are the favored inflation numbers by the Federal Reserve. So it's the one that they look at the most to determine whether or not to kind of raise rates or not. So right off the bat, the core number previous was 0.1. The forecast was 0.3%. We came in at 0.3%. So that one came in in alignment. So no big deal there. The next one was the price index, so the PCE, meaning everything included. Previous was 0.4, forecast was 0.3. It came in a little bit hotter than expected, but only by 0.1%, so not overwhelmingly hot, just slightly. Core PCE year over year, 3.7, forecast was 3.7. PCE year over year, 4.3.4, so these came in exactly in alignment. The next one, this is the one that I think makes the difference, folks. And again, these are the next two numbers. So normally, the PCE data would be the most important. But in general, this came in in alignment, right? For the most part, aside from just a slight, slight miss on this one, these all came in. The personal spending. Now, this is people spending. So number one, it jumped pretty dramatically expectations were 0.5% increase in spending. It went to 0.7. That's a pretty big jump, in fact. Now, the kicker is this, guys, right? The kicker is this, is that that is telling me something. It is telling me that people are being forced to still spend or they still are willing to spend, but we know credit card debt is skyrocketing. We know defaults are increasing. So it's telling you that to me, there's, an, there's a consumer that is still willing to spend, but they're using debt. They're jumping on that credit card bandwagon to make this spending occur. The next one is the best one. This is the best, at least for the Federal Reserve. Personal income. Now, again, it's not necessarily the best for you and I. We want our income to go up, but expectations were 0.4%. It came in less. So income is starting to drop. Spending is actually going up. We're starting to get a disparity here. And this overall is not good for the economy. So again, for you and I and everyone out there, that's not good. The Federal Reserve is probably saying, oh, this is good because it will bring eventually down inflation. All right, so again, just to understand this number here, these two numbers, personal spending and personal income, those are the key ones for today for me. Those again are positive for risk assets because again, it shows maybe the Federal Reserve won't have to continue to hike. All right. So we're seeing an equity at S&P 500 rallies thus far after yesterday's nasty day. Now, this is where it gets fun for me, folks. We kind of took care of all the numbers, all that crap like that. Now, I want to get into the charts. And again, this is kind of charts, but I'm going to show you what I mean by this. Let's flip over to the daily chart. Now, remember, 
I gave you guys a target price on the S&P 500 or the spiders. Where did I say the big level was going to be? And the big level was going to be at the three, at the, excuse me, at the 412 level. The 412 level on the SPY. Why? Because again, we can clearly see pivot point, pivot point, pivot point, pivot point right here. Therefore, we broke this upsloping line and we would go to the next pivot point right there. Now, if you're a trader and you bought that level, right now you're sitting pretty because the SPY is up about $2 off of that level. All right, so again, yesterday it pierced. Now you're getting a little bit of a technical bounce. So again, listen, charts are not perfect. I am not perfect. I make mistakes, but I play the probabilities. All right, again, you know, if you're in the casino, you try to play the probabilities in the casino, but inevitably you lose, right? That's just the nature of blackjack, roulette, and all these other things. However, with the stock market, with using charts to your advantage, you can put the probabilities in your favor which means that if you follow the rules and you know the rules, you can ultimately make money as a trader and an investor. But again, discipline, no, no emotion, which is part of discipline, and understanding the levels is of utmost importance. Okay, so where could we go? Let's talk about a bounce in the stock market. Then we're going to get into earnings, obviously. We saw Amazon report after the bell yesterday. So if we bounce here, the logical target for a bounce is going to be back to the scene of the crime around 428 to 430 on the SPY. All right, so again, right now we're back to about 414, 414 and a half. The, the best case scenario is a move back to this scene of the crime, which is this trend line. Again, I could go back further and show you where it connects, but we know that this level right here is your target zone on the SPY. All right, so that's your general thought process there. Now, if we flip over to the QQQ, this is kind of a little bit of a more interesting chart. You can see I have a lot of trend lines on this chart. We're going to zoom in to try to kind of figure it out. So number one, we already cut through this one right here. Yes, we're bouncing today in the NASDAQ. But again, this one has been broken. And this, remember this one? How many days did we talk about this one, guys, right? How many days did we talk about how the market was staying within this range here? But finally, it broke to the downside yesterday. Now, again, if we get a bounce on the NASDAQ, the likely scenario is we're going to trade back to the scene of the crime. Let me just remove this trend line to keep it as simple as possible. All right, now the scene of the crime, if we remove that, right, and we flip back, you would be looking for a check back to this level around 350. Is there a chance that we could go a little bit higher? There is, but this is the safe bet, right? The safe probable bet, a move back to about 350 on the QQQ. Now, why could the spiders potentially bounce more than the Qs? The answer is simple. You have the large cap tech, the mega caps, the Magnificent Seven, and they literally are struggling like crazy. If you looked at the stock market yesterday and the day before, and you looked at all of the S&P 500 stocks, the mega caps were the ones getting pounded the most. They were getting crushed. Now remember, those stocks led us to the upside. Now they're actually leading us to the downside. Now again, they're in the S&P 500, but they have a bigger weight in the NASDAQ. And so if we continue to see weakness in those Magnificent Seven, then it goes to make sure that we understand or the logic dictates that the NASDAQ could bounce less than the S&P overall if the bounces do occur. But I do want to take a look at gold real quick. Gold again doing exactly what I wanted to do, which is consolidating. Uh, not much to update here. It's just doing what we wanted to do. Eventually, the probabilities tell us that this move will push up. Could it pull back a little bit first? Yes, it could. You just want to see it hold this level around 1900, 1880. Next up, let's quickly look at Bitcoin. So you guys get your Bitcoin chart update here. Bitcoin doing the same general thing as gold, frankly. It's just a little earlier on. It's beginning to consolidate here. I'm still short this, this position. I'm still looking for a little bit more of a pullback. Yes, I'm in the money, about a thousand bucks on it, but I'm still looking for a little bit more. I'd still like to see a little bit more like this and then, then expect maybe a move up off of that. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Okay, lastly, I want to just show natural gas. Natural gas did have a pullback here. Remember, we had the breakout, beautiful breakout right here on the chart. Here, 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 and here was your low level. Then across from here to here 
and then broke out. It pulled back. I was hoping it would get here. It didn't. That's just the nature of some charts. Sometimes they don't get to your levels. That's part of being a trader. And then ultimately, it's now starting to push higher. You do have resistance right here at around 355. Let's see if it gets through that. If it does, you're headed higher. And lastly, I'll just show you guys the silver chart real quick so we can take a look at that. And silver continues to be stuck in a channel. This is unlike gold. Gold's broken out of its channel. So it shows you the relative strength of gold. Silver still has to break out of this area up here, up here. If it does, that's going to be very bullish, but right now it is still stuck in that range. All right, guys. Join our community of forward thinkers, stay ahead of the crypto curve, and let's ride the blockchain wave together. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.